Jeremy, and I just wanted to show you guys how I do research, how I consume documents, how I read things, both professionally, academically, when I'm reading teaching material, when I'm reading documents for, for work, when I have to learn a new programming language, um, when I have to learn new principles for software design, when I have to read all of the capstone documents. Um, understand what we're tackling together. This is my process. It's, it's grown over time and I'm just going to share with you the thing that works for me. It's basically four steps. The first step is to read the thing. The second step is to take what I now call fleeting notes, which are um, from the Zettelkasten note-taking method. So they're called fleeting notes. I then import them into a tool called Obsidian, and then I elaborate on the notes. And this is actually the key step. It's that final step where you take your references, you take all of your little notes that you've done, and you zoom out and write a short one paragraph. Sometimes it's called an atomic note. Sometimes it's called a permanent note, again, in the Zettelkasten method. I've stolen step twos and step fours from Zettelkasten. And you write that, that first rough draft, that first introductory paragraph of that material. And then you leave it. And you leave it for a couple of different reasons. One, you let your mind sit there and work on it. Two, you might not need that reference right away. You might use that reference uh, later. You might need it in a future class. The point is you've stumbled across something and you're going to step in right away. You're going to read it, and then you're going to leave an artifact of yourself of what you were thinking in that moment. So this is my process. Um, everything's intentional. I have a glass of water. Sometimes it's a glass of bourbon. It depends on the time of the day. I have my paper notebook. So my tape, paper notebook here is essential for if I'm reading something and I get distracted, like, oh, I got to do that thing. I don't get up and do it. I don't sit there and worry about it. I write it down in the notebook on my task list. Actually, this was last week. March. Um, where'd it go? Here we go, my task list. So here's my task list. So I'll just add it there if I think of something so that my brain can be not distracted. My phone is not, it's over there. Go away, okay? I have the document that you can see on the screen here, physically printed. I always start with paper. It's what works for me. The physical writing works for me. You can take your notes directly in the tool. You can highlight directly in the tool. Um, but starting with paper works for me. It helps me stay focused so that I can be on content. Okay. Then. I use a fountain pen because I love fountain pens and that makes it an enjoyable thing. So picking a pen that I want to use, picking an ink that I want to use, makes it part, it's just like another part of the signature. And then I use note cards. So summary, something to capture my mental distractions so that I won't get torn away from the task. I have the physical document that I'm going to take notes on note cards for my first step, that first step, which are the fleeting notes. Okay, so we're gonna step into step one. I'm gonna leave the camera on. Um, and I'm just gonna process this document. This is future Jeremy editing this video. And if you watch the clock as I sped up the video, it only takes me 13 minutes to read this document. So we haven't invested a whole lot of time into this research process. And that this is what's important, um, something I found when I was a graduate student myself, is if you have 10 minutes or you have 15 minutes, you can get through a single document and get, get the fleeting notes out, get the note card done, and then you can do the, uh, the deep thinking, the elaboration, later, but you can break things into chunks and knock them out incrementally as you work through the corpus of knowledge that you have to consume in order to be successful at graduate work.
So that's it. Uh, four pages became two and a half index cards. So these ideas are still fresh in my mind. So let's now go to some tooling and make sure we have what we need. So, so the ink doesn't dry out. So this document here, um, I need to import it into my reference manager. I personally use Zotero. It's awesome. I've been using it for years. I use it for Bible study. I use it for learning music. I, and I also use it just, it's almost like my, my bookmark system. Um, so I've imported the document here. Uh, my favorite way to import when it's available is ISBN or the DOI number. Um, DOI numbers show up quite often in our technical resources or ISBN. When this import method is not available, I click that button and then I end up tweaking little things in this field. So I've already done that part. I will spare you from that. This is a new tool for me. I've added this tool within the last couple of weeks. And this is a tool that um, comes from that Zettelkasten uh, note-taking technology, note-taking technique. Um, the book for it is uh, right here and it's fantastic. How to take smart notes, one simple technique for boosting writing and thinking. It's really about thinking and clearly intentionally, which is what writing really is. And that's why writing is such a powerful tool for learning. But let's import these. So this is opening a what is called a literature note. So I'm going to take my fleeting notes and I'm going to import them. So I like to start with definitions, um, especially when I'm reading math papers. It's really nice to put the definitions in first up front. Uh, I spelled this wrong. I'm just going to let it go. I'm in that creative mode of just getting my notes out. I'm not going to switch to my editor mode. These are notes for me. Um, we can clean things up later. I'm just going to stay in this frame of mind of getting things out. Okay, so this document's really coming up that the microservices aren't really about um, the architecture themselves. They're really about an architecture facilitating change. So it's more about change than it is the, the services themselves. Okay. I think that's an Abraham Lincoln quote. Whatever you choose to do, do well. Whatever you choose to be, be well. I think that's an Abraham Lincoln quote. Okay, that's all the notes I took. These are now done. Throw them away. What do we have so far? We have our literature notes. We have a nice little um, description of what this, what we got out of this document. We might clean up that spelling texture. Um, and then we have a link back to our original reference. So we can always refine that thing. And we even have an artifact of the reference as it was at the time we grabbed it. So if it ever gets pulled, pulled down, it's no longer online. We have at least a handle of what the reference was at that time. So we're, we're um, doing quite well. And now we're going to do the most powerful piece, which we're going to summarize this note and take what's called an atomic note or permanent note and elaborate it on a little bit. So a few key rules. You are writing this as if you are writing it to an audience, to, to someone external to you. You are going to explain to them what this document was about. You are explaining it to them with the intention that in the future, your future self will find this note and will have forgotten what this was. And so this is you writing to your future self to help you when you do need to pull a reference to talk about microservices. And what you'll see over time is all of these notes 
start to build these really cool connection graph of all of your knowledge. And you can sit there and fly around with the things that you've been interested in, the things that you know, the things that you um, read about, and you get to see how everything's connected. This is very quite small, quite small version. And as I said, this tool is somewhat new in my flow, but I am just loving it. So let's do it. So this is going to be, what is the summary of this document? So what is the fact that will bring this up to my memory again in the future? So not necessarily something I can search for because I can always search for something, not necessarily something that um, like a full text search or a keyword. I want something that I put my own thought or spin on, and that will give me that insight back into this document. So I'm going to say microservices are a pattern for deployment, not, yeah, it's kind of awkward. Um, so it's more deployment. They're more of an external pattern than an internal pattern. Yeah. And then we are going to reference this to what are microservices. Okay. And now we're going to write that internal reflection. So what's cool is if we go back to if one day in the future we're looking at this reference and we're like, oh, this is this seems cool, this kind of smattering of notes, what was that really about? Well, we can see that we have, have this linked mention here that we're about to write this quick little paragraph. So I'll go ahead and write it now. So this is by far the most challenging part of the flow, this, this final step, this elaboration step. This is where you make the work your own. But if you watch the clock, the video sped up, but if you watch the clock, there, this only takes six minutes. And so each of these four steps are atomic little steps. They have a little bit of input, they have a little bit of time, and they have a discrete output. And because you can break each thing into these small 10-minute little chunks, six-minute chunks, but you are creating real value. And over time, that value will compound and you will form this corpus of personal reflection on deeply technical topics. And you'll be able to speak very intentionally, very clearly, and you'll be able to speak with authority because you'll have full references behind everything you say. Okay. This is my permanent note. I might clean this up a little bit. I might move some headings, but the point is, is that this is a note, uh, a, the, basically the beginning of a rough draft. This could be a discussion post. Um, it could be the beginning of a rough draft. It could be part of uh, a, a comparison document or a survey document in a later class, or even at work if you're asked to, you know, provide what your What's your opinion on microservices? You could pull this out as, well, on microservices, I believe they're an external pattern. It's less about how the things are built themselves. And they're like, oh, where did you get that? And you could come to your, your Obsidian system, your second brain, as it's called, and you can even pull the reference if you needed to. So it can make you a very powerful engineer, a very uh, clear communicator, and it's all facilitated by just regular practice. This the system wins because you you do this regularly. This just becomes a habit for you. You read your documents. You got to read things for school. You got to read things for work, whatever you're doing. Do this extra little step of taking your notes, putting them in, summarizing them back to your future self. And you do that over and over, linking it with other things. I need to go close these links. This is a book that I thought of. This is another book that I thought of. Hatos is a way of doing uh, RESTful web services over HTTP. So I need to complete the linking of this note so that if I'm ever in one of those areas again, 
it'll start to fill in this graph of my knowledge. And that is how I do research.